come down here and you're starting to meet people. Tell me about what you're wearing, who you're with, all right, and, and why you're here. Well, everyone you see here, we are members of the United States Army Gold Guard Fight and Drum Corps. We are one of the four premier bands of the United States Army. We're all active duty soldiers. Uh, so you'll see fights, bugles, and uh, one valve bugles, and snare and bass drums that we're playing today and uh, some of our members are former GCIers. So, okay. uh, you know, we're here, we've been asked to come. The U.S. Army is one of the sponsors of this event, so right. we're, we're here as one of the U.S. Army bands uh, supporting what's going on. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're playing and we're talking to people out here. Uh, we are wearing red coats because back in the Revolutionary yeah, War, musicians wore the opposite colored coat of the infantry that, that uh, they supported. Really? So you could easily identify musicians when you had a bunch of soldiers around. We were the communication on and off the battlefield. So if, you, if the commanding officer needed something, needed to put something else, uh, put something out very quickly, they didn't have radios to use, they had music to use. So they would tell their, their the closest musician to play whatever call, whether it was a That's what bugle calls no. drum call. Yeah, it was a way to communicate on the battlefield. Right. Uh, fifes and, and drums were used more before bugles and uh, horns yeah, became uh, more popular. Right. Those, those became more popular as uh, they needed, you know, they were riding horseback and they needed just the one hand. But while they were marching behind the, the troops, uh, you often saw fights and drums being used in the revolution. So let me ask you this, is the, the term red coat, is that not accurate when we think of the British soldiers as being in red coats? British, British soldiers were, were definitely wearing red coats. They would have been a lot more expensive and exquisite. So they could tell coats. the difference. In other words, Correct. you were not in danger of... Well, yeah, there's, Friends, there's a yeah. couple things that went into that. First of all, uh, they, you can tell they had a lot of gold on their uniforms. We didn't have the money for that, so you, know, you wouldn't have seen any of that on a uniform. It was later in the war when we started to get money and then supplies, and we had the time to, to get these red coats. So at the beginning of the war, you didn't see, you didn't see a lot of that. But, um, yeah, you, you often, also, musicians were young children. They were following their fathers oh off the battle. Oh so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years of age, uh, playing, mu playing music, but not purposely being shot at. Uh, there was a gentleman's agreement back then uh, to, to not shoot them. We didn't... Musicians didn't carry any weapons, yeah. so uh, they they didn't serve any any dangerous purpose. Uh -huh. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, muskets weren't extremely accurate. So, you know, uh, you know, of course, they could probably it would have incurred happened, some damage. Yeah. So, you actually know a lot of the history. Is part of being in this group learning that history, and they insist that you know those stories. Yes. For, yeah, uh -huh. of course. Inter uh, for so we can, just like we can this. do things like this. We'll, uh, Crowd interaction and, and education. We do a lot of things at schools. We'll go to elementary school colonial days, and we'll, we'll put on an hour of performance when we're talking to the kids. Uh, I know in Virginia, uh, U.S. history is taught in fourth grade, and so when they're hitting that colonial time and Revolutionary War, we are a very popular, uh, uh, very popular yeah. request. So we'll, we'll tour a lot of the local schools and put on a performance. And you audition to be in this group. Yes, you can either audition as a civilian or. If you're already in an army van, you can you can try out. Uh, right now, we're having a, a bugle and a fife audition. They're both coming up. So when we have an open slot, you send in some uh, materials, a recording of yourself, and, and uh, we we select the ones that we want to come to an on-site audition. And that is usually two days where we we have you uh, we teach you some of our marching and we see if you can pick up that. Uh, you, you play some music that you've prepared. You play some you do some sight reading and you do an interview and. However many open slots we have by the end of that interview or that audition, uh, we'll, we'll pick. And then you go back to your recruiter, and if you're not in the army, you go back to your recruiter and say, "Here, I'm. Here's my papers. I'm going to be a 42 Sierra." And then you go to basic training, and then come straight to us out of basic training where we start our 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 AIT, our training program for about three to six months, where you're learning everything and, and you're ready to go after six months. You can do anything. How long have you been doing this? I've been here about seven and a half years. Wow. I got out of basic training in December of 2010, and so I've been here ever since. It's a, a permanent duty station. You can, and a permanent assignment. If you keep re-enlisting, you can stay in for all 20 years uh, or more. So, uh, and did you, you study music in college? Right? I, I did not. I grew up in Williamsburg, Virginia, and I played the fife as a kid oh, there okay, in yeah. the fife and drum yeah. corps. Uh -huh. And so I went to college and studied to be a teacher. I got my uh, kinesiology degree and then a master's to teach physical education and health. But I kept my kept up my fife playing and then there's an, uh, an audition the summer after I graduated from high school 
and my brother is in the unit as well. Uh, he had he had gotten in about a year and a half before I did. He's like, hey, there's there's I've heard there's something coming up, so I started practicing for it and went up and, and won the one spot that was open that that uh, that. But that you've been fall. playing it for probably much yeah. longer than some of your colleagues. Yeah, the well, the fight. fife, yes, yeah. but we we accept uh, flute and piccolo players. Right. Um, you know, they are, are many of the people that I was auditioned for the fife and drum yeah. corps, and then once they get there, we, we teach them the, the fife. Is there anything historical about this particular instrument, or is this a modern? This one is definitely modern. It has ten holes instead of just the, the, the normal six that you would have seen here on top on a six-hole fife in the Revolutionary War. Also, they would have been made out of one piece of wood. Uh -huh. uh, this is two pieces, so we can do a little bit more tuning with it. Uh, we can take it apart and store it. So this is definitely modern. We can play it with the bugles and we can play it with some other instruments and it helps us a lot to, to do a lot more modern things than just a six hole fight would allow us to right. do. But that's definitely the more historic. Yeah. And those, you know, they didn't have very you know, good manufacturing. They would have had fight makers and, and instrument makers, but they would have all been very different and they would have been very hard to tune and yeah. they would have sounded probably very bad. Yeah. <laughs> but fife and drum cores were also uh, you know, not as common. You were lucky to have some fighters and drummers in your unit. Right, sure. Uh, a fighter and a drum. Hopefully you had one of each. The, the right. calls sounded very similar. So if you didn't have one or the, or the other, you could still, the soldiers still knew what was being called. And maybe if you were massing up and, and marching from one place to the other, marching through a town, you, you wanted to show the town the spirit of the soldiers, then you would play some music. But, you know, also often if you were going from one place to the other, you didn't want to be captured. You can hear this from far, you know, ways away. So yeah. you would march quiet, quietly, maybe to a stick tap or, or maybe to nothing at all. But uh, the, uh, the fifers and drums also, they got in trouble if they tried to store their units on the cart. They, they had to carry their own stuff. And also, they were the ones that uh, would would dole out some of the, the punishments if you were if you got in trouble. The, the older, if you were much older, too too old to fight. Often, you, you played instruments as well, and so some of the soldiers would, would dole out punishments for the for the officers. So we had a bunch of different responsibilities. <laughs> Tell the viewers your name again. Yes. I'm Staff Sergeant John Parks from Williamsburg, Virginia, and I'm a member of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. For your time.